Good evening and welcome to the Irish Art Show brought to you from the Scientology Community Centre, Dublin. Tonight we are delighted to welcome multi-award winning singer-songwriter Taylor D. Hailing from Dublin, she has been making waves in the global music scene. Crowned First Choice Radio UK Artist of the Year, Taylor's music has been recognised and appreciated all over the world, including Australia, Tokyo, the US and the UK. With a list of achievements that include winning the Irish Youth Music Awards in 2021, the President Award for Music in 2022, and being a regular feature on numerous radio stations worldwide. She continues to ascend to greater heights in her musical journey. Please welcome the fantastic Taylor D. TV screen, your gaze never leave in my eyes. Wondering I would really be to have you by my side. And it's too late now to regret it. I meant to. was an original song called Lost. This next one is another original song called Liar and it's on my debut EP, Fangirl. Sleep before. 
six weeks I moved on I hope you move too Even though I still catch myself looking at you I'm not going back Back to where we were Cause I don't wanna live with a shame of my This next song is called Waste Not My Love.
doesn't mean that I like This next song is called Until the Time is Right It's 6 a.m. I'm still awake Still staring at you Through the phone in my hands My heart begins to ache Cause I'm not good enough You want someone rich and famous Well that's not me Hoping one day I'll make it So you might see We could be meant to be And you say that I've lost my mind But I don't really care You're the one I've been trying to fight And I don't mind waiting my whole life Till the time Until the time is right And I lied to everyone Even though you're gone Just to keep your momentum on So you might see We could be meant to be And you say that I've lost my mind But I don't really care you're the one I've been trying to fight And I don't mind waiting my whole life Till the time is right Until the time is right It's 6 a.m. I'm still awake Still staring at you Through the phone in my hands my heart begins to ache Cause I'm not good enough You want someone rich and famous Well that's not me I shouldn't have to make it For you to see We could be meant to be And you say that I've lost my mind But I don't really care You're the one I've been trying to find And I don't mind waiting my whole life Till the time is right Until the time is right We could be meant to be The song is called Fall Apart was counting before you brought the storm I had it all there was no way to fall I painted a perfect picture of life for you and me but little did I know you would have me down on my knees but I don't want the stream to fall apart if I have to, I'll write it in the stars No one's gonna tell me not to believe Cause you were all I needed to feel complete I look back on the memories we made But I know you'll remember the day when we were young and full of love And we wouldn't think twice But when I walked out that door My heart fell apart But I don't want the stream to fall apart If I have to, I'll write it in the stars No one's gonna tell me not to believe Cause you were all I needed To feel complete Oh, I wish I could see you again Maybe then you'll remember The times when When we were young and full of love And we wouldn't think twice 
It was never wrong, it was never right But we always got by Oh, I wish I could go back to that time When it all made sense This next song is the title track of my debut, Plea Fangirl, and it goes out to all the fangirls out there. Right from the start, he caught my eye. He was this perfect kind of guy. The ones on stage and movie screens He's not like you and I He's my favorite notification And I hate when it's not there He's my everything and I'm just the light in the crowd Another one in another world and I'll stand side stage hoping one day he'll say hello to the fangirl my friends all say I've lost my mind I shouldn't be dreaming of his kind And I know all of his stories They live inside my heart He's my everything And I'm just the light in the crowd Another one of his fangirls Lost in another world And I'll stand side stage Hoping one day he'll say Hello to the fangirl Well, what can I say? What a fantastic performance. I'm loving Taylor Day and loving her songwriting. I'm looking forward to actually interviewing her and seeing where she is going on her musical journey. So ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to welcome to the stage, to the Irish Art Show, Taylor D. Hello. How are you? I'm good, good. How are you? Having a good day with us. I am. I'm really enjoying myself. <laughs> yeah. We're well, having a good day with you too. So you're very welcome. Um, I'd like to start off the interview with how you got into the music business, how it all started for you. So I started guitar lessons when I was 12. But before that, I bought a drum kit. I was like, I need a drum kit. I want to try it. I want to play the drums. I tried it twice and I gave up. I was like, no, this is not for me. So I watched Jack Black's School of Rock 
and I decided, right, I want to do guitar. So my mom and dad, they got me a guitar. I started guitar lessons in the local community center and I was two or three weeks in the beginners and I moved up because I was practicing every day, four or five hours a day, learning songs every day and going in every week with different songs that I had learned. And then the, my music teacher then, he said to me, we have a program called the Irish Youth Music Awards, which encourages people to write songs. He said, come along. So I said, okay, I'll join. And I joined in that September. And he said to me, look, you have to write a song now. You're here, you're gonna write a song, we're gonna push you to write it. And I thought, no way, will I ever write a song? And he said, no, no, you can, try it, try it. So I wrote my first ever song. And I look back on it now and it was a horrible song. I thought it was great back then, but it's not now compared to what I'm writing now. It's very immature for the age of me. I was 13 when I wrote that song. And yeah, I worked in the Irish Youth Music Awards. We'd done the program there for a year. We'd done Crow Park performance through that. And then I went on to join a band and we wrote some songs there together as well. And been working at it ever since. And were you surprised that you were able to write a song? I was shocked. I never would have thought How I'd write a song. How did it come so easily to you? I just really put myself in the mindset of, I'm going to write a song, but what do I want to write about? Mm. What am I feeling right now? What emotions are going through my head right now? Like, I need to get it out on paper. What is it? And I wrote the song. You know, even though you're saying you might not really like the song now, because obviously you're a lot, a lot older, but it still is your first song. Yeah. that you wrote so it, there is a specialty about that too you know yeah there's a bit of sentiment too yes. I still look at it every now and then and go oh I wrote that yeah but I wouldn't perform it live anymore <laughs> <laughs> and um how like what's your musical influence I, I you know obviously I, I, I looked up at you on uh, your, your Instagram account and I see you're a big fan of the vamps and I believe you like the, the lead singer so maybe that's something to do with it but um tell me about who else you follow or why the Vamps actually start with that, because I know you're mad about the Vamps. So I started following the Vamps 11 years ago when they first started their band. I remember seeing them on Disney Channel and they performed their song, Can We Dance? And I remember thinking, I like that song. So I looked them up on YouTube and I started kind of following them. And But I was too young to go to their concerts. So unfortunately, I only got to see them live last year for the first time. But I've been following them for a long, long while. And I feel like I can relate to them in much ways because they started at the similar age to myself. We started at 15, writing songs and working, they were working with record labels, obviously. And you can just see the involvement of their songwriting between the maturity levels and just growing as artists and getting better mm -hmm. at their music and getting better at their instruments. So I definitely say I'd relate to the Vamps a lot and I take a lot of inspiration from them. And I also take a lot of inspiration from Ed Sheeran. Okay. I think Ed Sheeran's incredible how he can stand up in Crow Park or Wembley and entertain 80,000 people with just himself, a guitar, a loop pedal and maybe a piano. Mm. I think that's incredible. I think he's a great songwriter and some of the collaborations that he's had over the years are absolutely amazing. And you know, you think about it, he has often said that he was quite a loner when he was in school. He, was, he kind of did his own thing and, um, you know, but, and then he's just become this person of just magnitude. Incredible. Like he was, he was quite shy, he said, when he was in school. I would have been the same. Yeah. I was very shy when I was younger. The teachers used to say, God, she's very shy. She needs to do something to get her out of her comfort zone. And I took to music and I started to grow in confidence a little bit. I'd still be a little bit shy, but I'm a lot better than what I was when I was younger. Well, you're doing very well now, I have to say. You're not as shy as you used to be, obviously, which is great. And I, and I can see that you're getting an awful lot of radio playing. I know you were interviewed by 98FM, am I right? Yeah, 98FM, yeah. yes. Tell us a little bit about that, how that came about for you. So I obviously released my debut EP called Fangirl. And I was always kind of pushing it to try and get it on more national radios, which I hadn't been able to do beforehand. So I pushed it in, I sent it into 98 FM, I sent it on to Today FM, all them big stations, never thinking they'd respond. And they did. They said, we're gonna play your song this Sunday. Have a listen, and I listened out, and they played the song, and then they were playing it every week. And I just kind of got shocked. And then I was invited into RTE to do an interview on RTE and 2FM, which was crazy to be even asked into RTE at my age, let alone in starting off in the music career. And I'd done that interview, and then they played my songs. They played Fangirl a couple of times on 2FM. And then Today FM started picking up on it as well. They were playing it, and it's regularly on Today FM and 98 FM. I have to say, it's very um, very catchy, and I like I like the actual title of it, Fangirl. Yeah. Was that about the Vamps? Was it, it was, yeah. It was <laughs> I'm only thinking of that yeah. now, Fangirl. But, but, uh. Yeah, I wrote it after the Vamps concert last year. Yeah. I went to see them in December and I looked at all the crowd and they were all screaming, including myself. I'm not going to lie, I was screaming. Because <laughs> that's what, what can you I do. do. That's, it's you, a concert. You go to a concert, you <laughs> scream. And I really, really thought, geez, this would be a great idea for songs. So I went home the next morning, I got up, I sat at the piano 
and I was playing the piano and I drove my mum and dad nuts in the house playing the same riff over and over and over again until I wrote the song and I was like this this is going to be something I have mm -hmm. to do something with this I can't just put it away in the book I have to record this song do you think you could send it to the vamps I've tried. Have you? I have this little thing going on TikTok with my TikTok followers where I get people to tag the vamps in the comment section. And we got one of them to see one of the videos before and they commented. So the aim now is to get all the vamps to yeah. see it and hear the song. Keep it going. It might happen yeah. for you. Hopefully. Absolutely. And I know that you've been featured in Hot Press. How did that come about? That must have been exciting for you. Yeah, the Hot Press was really, really exciting to come about because obviously getting Hot Press is like huge as an artist mm -hmm. to get the feature of their new songs to hear this week. I actually went to the academic and I met a guy who works for Hot Press and I said to him, look, I'm writing songs. I'd love to get into Hot Press. How do I do it? And he goes, send me on your stuff and I'll see what I can do. So I sent him on a little press release that I wrote about my song Fangirl. And he said, right, I'm going to send it on to our writers. And like, whether it happens or not, I don't know. But sure enough, a week later, there was the write-up in a hot press. Mm -hmm. They tweeted me. That's where I seen it first was on Twitter. And I remember being like, oh, my God, I'm on their playlist. But they had a little press release attached to it. And it was their link to their website. And I just happened to scroll down. And I seen Fangirl by Taylor D. And I was out with my friend at that time. I was like, oh, my God, this is amazing. They're featuring it. And then they featured my next song, Liar. And then they featured my EP, which was amazing that they're actually supporting young artists, up and coming artists. Were you surprised with the, um, I suppose, the, all the, the kind of things that are going on with that, with, I can't even think of the word, the, the kind of notoriety of the song. Did you know when you made the song, when you created it, that there was something special about it? I definitely think people could relate to it. When I wrote the song first, it was like, people are going to relate to this. Then when I recorded it, I was like, this one is very Taylor Swift inspired. Mm -hmm. A lot of people love Taylor Swift. A lot of people are fangirls for every different band all over the world. So I thought a lot of people are gonna relate to this song. So I wasn't surprised that people did relate, but I was surprised with the release from the press and mm -hmm. the support from the radios. And tell us a little bit about The Time Is Right. Until The Time Is Right was written yeah. about when you have a crush on someone typical teenage crush and you just you're in awe of this person and they might not necessarily reciprocate it all the time sometimes they do they may disappear for times they might ghost you you may see them and be like I yeah I really do I have this crush on you mm. and then you might they might disappear but until the time is right it's basically saying that on, no matter how far you're gone no matter how long you're gone for I'll wait until our time is right mm. and wait until the time is right for us to be together. Amazing, yeah. Amazing whether you put that, put that together. It's fabulous. What actually is your favourite song that you've written? I'd be Until the Time is Right. It's my favourite okay. song I've written. I definitely think it's the one that I've been most honest with mm -hmm. in it. And I really, really listen to that song every day. And I think, God, that's really how I felt at that moment in time. And I think a lot of people can relate to it as well. Yeah. And what about, um, what, would, what would be your favourite song, say, from an, an artist? Or, I know you, do you have any other, oh, but you had Ed Sheeran as well. Who, so who would, what would be your favourite song? My favourite song them? would be Antihero by Taylor Swift. Right. I've always followed Taylor Swift. I've been following her since I was a kid. And I think that song mm -hmm. really just relates to me. And I think to a lot of people, like, you constantly blame yourself. If something goes wrong, it's like, I'm the problem, it's me. Sure. I did it, I'm the reason why. Something happened, and I feel like a lot of people can relate to that song, so I really enjoy that song, and it's really one of my favourites. I think we're all a bit like that, aren't we? Yeah, definitely. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. And, you know, while we're on that, what, what, how, where do you think you're going to be, actually, five years from now? Because, obviously, you're 18 years of age, and you're a wonderful young woman, but, obviously, another five years is going to change you. Where would you like to be? I'd like to have released my first album. So I've done the EP mm -hmm. now. The whole idea this year was to try and get the EP out, do more live performances. I'd love to have an album out now. I'm working on writing stuff now for an album. So I'm hoping in the next year or two, I'll have that all recorded and hopefully ready to release. I'd love to be doing more gigs. I'd love to play mm -hmm. more festivals. I'd love to play Electric Picnic, get onto the Tree Olympia, the Tree Arena, all them venues. I'd love to play all them. No reason why you can't. Yeah, I hope so. Hopefully yeah. people will go if I do get to do them shows. Well, you know, you, even with the shows you're doing, you still have a lot of things going on. You're getting an awful lot of um, press. Yeah, definitely. You know? A lot of the press are getting behind yeah. it. In Ireland, UK, US, all around the world yeah. are getting behind it. Yeah. And actually, I'm looking at this. You, you've won so many awards in the last, what, three years? Yeah. Um, so we have the Irish Music Awards. That was 2021. The Garda Youth Award, and that was 2021. The Kashka, is it? Awards, 2022 and 2023. 
and the first choice radio artist of the year 2022. So that's just incredible. So where I'd like to go stay with the first choice radio artist of the year award. Can you tell us about that? So first choice radio is a radio station in the UK yeah. that I've been sending my stuff to for probably over a year and a half now. And I've been sending in, you know, when I released Fangirl, I sent that in, they played it, they play it all the time. They run this competition every year and it's the artist of the year for the upcoming artists of the year on yeah. their show. And I was nominated against, I think there was 20 or 30 people in the category. And I was shocked when I seen the nomination come true. I couldn't believe that they had featured me. Mm. Like, out of all the artists that are out there, there's some amazing artists out there, but I was shortlisted on this list. And it was to follow a public vote. So I thought, God, there's no way I'm going to be able to do that. I don't know that many people. Not many people are going to vote. I'm, I don't even have a chance. Like, it's great to be nominated, but I'm not keeping any hopes up. So I posted it, I shared it. My whole town got behind me. The whole of Auckland got behind That's me. Crazy. They all shared it. Everybody was sharing it on their Instagrams, to their friends, to family group chats across the world. I've seen it on Twitter loads. It was on Facebook, Instagram, the local coffee shops and all were getting behind <laughs> it. All the shops and they were all supporting it. And I thought, oh God, I still don't think I have it. Like I've got a lot of views, but there's a lot of people that are in it that have thousands of followers. Like I wouldn't have that many followers. Some of them had 20,000 followers. I thought, no way, no way. So it came to the day of the results and the guy says, right, we have, our results are closed now. We'll be announcing it in two days time. And I thought, okay, well that was great to say that I got nominated for, but I don't think I'm gonna come anywhere. So we announced second place and I thought, right, well, if I didn't get second place, there's no way I'm gonna get first place. And he announced the second place. And I was like, okay, yeah, I didn't get it. That was, it was great to be nominated. And then the next day he announced the first place and I seen my name and I actually had to take a double take because I couldn't believe that I had won it, I was in pure shock. And it was amazing to get that. And then I got the award shortly afterwards, which is a lovely little glass award with First Choice Studio UK Artist of the Year, which is amazing to look over at and say, I accomplished that. And they play my songs very regularly now and all my songs on the EP have been played on the station, so it's great. I said it must have given you a really good boost. Oh, it did, yeah. yeah. It really encouraged me to just keep going because sometimes yeah. you hit places in music and it's like, you're getting rejections, Does you're not getting responses to emails. And I was like, oh, I'm kind of a bit disheartened yeah. now. But when I got that, I was like, right, this is my thing. I need to keep going at this. I need to keep working, no matter how hard it is, no matter how disheartening it is sometimes, just keep working at it. I think even sometimes if you get a rejection, just keep going, let, let it go, let it go and move on to the next thing, you know, which you are doing anyway, yeah. you know, which is, which is great. Um, and tell me as well about the GAR, the Youth Award. So the Garda Youth Award is an award that's given to a young person or anybody in the local area for doing work for the community. So I got the award for the Local Community Safety Award. And how I got that award was when I was 13, 14, I sold CDs with my original songs that I had recorded on it in my local schools and then in my own school, around the community, to family, friends, everybody. And I sold them for a fiver. And I said, right, every CD that I sell, every bit of money is going to Piedra House because I think that's a charity that is needed so much in the world yeah. now. We have so many people suffering with depression and mental health issues, and I think people just need that support, so I'm gonna give it there. And loads of people bought the CDs, and I brought it down, so I think I had over 200, 300 euro to give to them, and the guards picked up on it, and I was nominated for Garda Youth Award. I love that. And I won that then as well. They had a local ceremony in a local coffee shop, and I was presented with the award, and it was such a rewarding day to see that what I had done has made an impact on the community mm -hmm. in some way, shape or form. Yeah, but you'll have to build an awards room, I say, by the time you finish your career. Yes, <laughs> you know? loads of them now, there's too many. <laughs> it's great. And, and funny enough, you got, in, in both of those awards, you had the community behind you. Yeah, they're very Especially for the, 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 the radio, the first choice radio artist award. Like that was, you, you definitely had all those people. That's an incredible thing for you to happen. Yeah, I was kind of shocked, to be honest, because yeah, wow. our town would be very much GAA driven. Yeah. So I thought, they're not really going to support music, are they? But they did. They got mm. behind it. Every single one of them got behind it. They supported true and true every day. For the, the competition ran, I think, from the start of the month right towards the end. But they got through it every single day. And there was something coming up every day. I was tagged in something where someone was sharing it or voting or telling people to vote or reminding people to vote. It was, it was just great to see them all come together as a community. And you're right, you will be thinking, sure, who's going to vote for me? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, that's just incredible. So, you know, it's been, it's been a pleasure having you. It's been a pleasure to be here. We really had really good fun. 
Um, you're wonderful to interview. You're a gorgeous woman and keep going. Keep, keep entertaining everybody. Thank you. Keep shining. And uh, so before we go, maybe you could just tell me all about your social media. So I'm on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, and I post on that regularly. It's Taylor D Music. And I have Spotify, YouTube, Apple Music, and any other streaming platform. There's too many of them at this stage, but I'm on every single one of them, and all my songs are live on them. Well, I tell you, you should be very proud of yourself. You've got really everything set up and ready to, like, you know, ready to go for a massive career, and you're just 18 years of age. It's incredible. Yeah. Well done. Thank you. Thanks sure, so everybody much for should be proud of you. I hope so. Yeah, they are. We'll see you soon. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there you go. What a fantastic show we've had. Isn't she just amazing? I told you, didn't I? She's gorgeous and wonderful to interview and I'm wishing her and the crew the best of luck in her future and we hope she will come back to us again soon. But in the meantime, thank you so much. You've had a wonderful time. See you soon. Take care. Good night. See you next week.